Ready to rumble. The West Coast Conference Tournament is underway and it's finally BYU's turn to step on the court. Cougs go social. Can't make it down to Vegas but still want to cheer on your Cougars? That's what the internet is for. And behind the bracket, see if the pros think BYU has a chance to make it seven in a row on NCAA tourneys. I'm Brooke Davis. And I'm Brianna Carr. Lace up those sneakers. It's time for the tube. here and not in Vegas. You know what, I'm still excited to be here. LeBron James will be in Salt Lake tonight. We're both going. Vegas or no Vegas, it's just gonna be a great night in basketball. I am excited. I hope Jeremy Evans and LeBron get to have a little dunk contest tonight, but let's focus on Cougar sports and hope, here's hoping that they'll stay in the tournament for have a little run. The upsides of Vegas, two banker Rachel Schwartz is there. She escaped all of this snow to anyway, follow our Cougars. 30, 30 degrees warmer than what you guys are experiencing there in Utah. We're just enjoying the sunshine. It's been great. I don't know about you, Monica. I am ready to finally see some Cougar basketball. We've been watching all these other games, and I'm so excited to see our Cougars today tonight. Can you that? Oh, it's going to be so great. The men come out tonight in the quarterfinals. The women come out tomorrow night in the semifinals with the WCC protecting the top one and two teams. But they've had so much time to prepare, and I think they're ready to come out and fight for it. The BYU Cougars have worked hard all season, but now it's tournament time. Both teams are well rested and ready to go. Those are the most exciting times because it's, uh, you know, kind of speaks for all the hard work everyone's put in, all the sacrifices, and that's what you play for. And you know, when you when you advance in the tournament, and it's you know, it's just a blast. Senior teammates Charles Abuo and Noah Hartsock both finished their BYU careers in Las Vegas this weekend. Although Hartsock is suffering a knee injury from the game against Santa Clara, it's a game time decision for Coach Rose. But he's expected to return to full health and start in tonight's game. But he's a great guy, and you know we've we've been through a lot, you know, on the court um, together, and you know he's been a guy that really gives me a lot of confidence. If the Cougars beat San Diego tonight in Game Five, they'll face Gonzaga in the semifinals tomorrow night. It will be the third time the Cougars play the Zags in just one month. So we're kind of getting near to the end of the road, but. You know, there's definitely such a thing as, you know, going out happy and on a good note, and that's what we want to do. Coming into the tournament, BYU has not one but two top women's WCC honorees. Lexi Eaton comes in as the co-newcomer of the year, while Kristen Riley comes in on top as the women's player of the year. West Coast Conference Commissioner Jamie Zaninovich says BYU brings a different kind of fan base to the now nine school conference. BYU is certainly an international brand um, and has a great fan following and with BYU TV a great platform. So certainly when you add a school like that to, a, to any conference, you're going to get a great uptick in the level of exposure for the league. So I think it's been very positive for us. The Lady Cougars come into the conference tournament as the number two seed, while the men come in as a three. You know, Rachel, I think it's going to be tough, but I think our Cougars can make it to the big dance. Yeah, you know, this is their first time competing in this conference tournament, but they have played all of these teams multiple times this season, like you said. So I think they're up for the challenge. Absolutely. But any team who wants to make it through this tough conference tournament and come out as a champion needs the support of their fans. Kyle, what did you find out? How can fans make an impact and help their team out? Yeah, Rachel, you know, I love going to basketball games and cheering on my Cougars just as much as the next person. But, you know, it's pretty amazing what the WCC staff has done this year to actually make a way for their fans to participate in the game, but even from home. Go to any basketball tournament in the country and you will find cheerleaders, mascots, the band, Perfect. and media activities, all in the effort to get fans involved in the game. Come to the West Coast Conference Tournament and you'll find a new way to get involved. It's all about tweeting. It's all about following the West Coast Conference sports on Twitter and making sure that you do the different things that they tell you to do and get free t-shirts, you get press row seats, you get free drinks. It's, got, it's awesome. The idea came back in January when Stuart Call realized that college students were using Twitter and Facebook much more than watching TV or listening to the radio. We were really excited about being able to, to involve the fans that weren't able to come out to the tournament, but still give them a chance to, to voice their opinion. The social media committee has contests running all weekend. They'll be checking their Twitter account and constantly announcing new winners. Instead of making it a vacation where you come to Vegas and then you go to a game, the entire experience is all about the game. 
was ever a weekend to be really active on Facebook or Twitter, this is it. So to be honest, Rachel, you're following me on Twitter, right? No, Kyle, I'm actually not following you on Twitter, but I am following WCC Sports. I plan to win a few t-shirts for myself this weekend. I've been impressed by the social media effort of the West Coast Conference. Not something that I really saw from the Mountain West, but it's not the only difference that I've seen between these two conference tournaments. For 12 years, BYU has played its conference tournament in UNLV's Thomas & Mack Center. But a change in conference only means a trip across the city. Players and fans will still enjoy the same sights and attractions of the Las Vegas Strip, but come game time, the Cougars will bring their loyal fans to a new, smaller venue, the Orleans Arena. The setting at the West Coast Conference Tournament is a lot more intimate than what we're used to at the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Even at full capacity, the Orleans Arena seats less than half the number of fans that pack in the Thomas & Mack. The size and atmosphere of the Orleans Arena impacts the vibe of the tournament for fans but it doesn't change the game plan for the Cougars. The Thomas and Mag is pretty crazy when you're playing UNLV, but besides that, it's just a neutral court. And we've had a lot of questions about the different gyms and the size in the, this conference, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's just you're still playing good teams and you're still playing basketball, and um, the arenas really don't make a big difference. If BYU fans think they're seeing a difference in their conference tournament experience, consider the change for BYU basketball players when it comes to the tournament format. In the Mountain West, all teams, including the top two seeds play from the start. But in the West Coast Conference, we won't see the top two teams out on the court until the semifinals. I caught up with WCC Commissioner Jamie Zaninovich to find out the philosophy behind the setup. Two principles at play there. One is it really rewards the regular, regular season. If you watch the games down the stretch, men's and women's side, the intensity of games of schools playing for the second seed versus the third seed, or not to be in an eight nine game. game. The intensity exactly. level really ratchets it up. I think it's important for, for our, our coaches and our administrators that we reward the regular season in a very real way. Protecting the, the top seeds is another element of it, but you know we're constantly looking at our at our format, and that's almost an mm -hmm. annual discussion with our athletic directors and our coaches, and I'm sure we'll continue to look at it this year, and uh, they'll make a decision as to what principles they value the most. You know, this conference tournament setup is a little different, but I think it's good. Both of our Cougar teams have, uh, well, the men's have one guy, and the women have the two guys. I think it'll really help them heading into hopefully the championship game. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, we've, we've seen these teams before. We know how they play. I think we've got a great shot of bringing home trophies this week. You know, I think I think the other teams are scared to see us on the court, so I think that's right. Well, guys, we're excited to see our Cougars play tonight. We're hoping for a conference championship, and we're ready to cheer them on. Back to you. Thanks, Rachel. Hopefully we make it to the conference championship on Monday. Hopefully. Here's hoping for the sweep, I guess. Yep. When Cougtube returns, Riley's Reward Player of the Week honors aren't enough for some Cougars. See what hardware took home. And Tourney Journey, nine teams started, but we're already down to six. See who made the cut. Stay with us. Crazy bracketing for the WCC tournament meant we didn't know until just last night who the men's basketball team would be up against first. But it looks like the Toreros of San Diego are the soup du jour. The big story of last night, freshman Johnny D with 30 points, helping San Diego qualify for the quarterfinals. Pepperdine led for most of the game in the second half after San Diego switched up their defense and the Toreros left the Orleans easily, surfing the wave 76 to 54. And it was no surprise the San Francisco Dawn sunk at the 7 and 24 pilots. USF took the lead early in the first half, shooting 64% from beyond the arc, but kept the lead until the clock hit zero with massive team chemistry in rebounding and points in the paint, sending the pilots packing with the final score, San Francisco 87, Portland 66. In the second round of the tourney, LMU took on Pepperdine and freshman Taylor Anderson led the Loyola Mary Mountain Lions with 10 points and 6 boards. But it was just not enough to contain the powerful offense of Pepperdine. The name of the game for the Waves was number 5 Jasmine Jackson. There she is there. She had 20 points and 9 boards. Pepperdine would go on to beat LMU for the third season in an easy 56-45 victory. The Portland Pilots faced off against Santa Clara for a shot at the quarterfinals. Portland held the lead for most of the game. Alexis Bird was big for Portland, but SCU climbed back within six points three times. The storyline for this game, though, was that the Pilots scored 30 points off 17 Santa Clara turnovers. Portland blew by the Lions with a 90-76 win and will get a shot against the number three San Diego Toreros later today. 
For Cougar fans, it's a tale of two tournaments with the beginning of the WCC party now and plans for the Big Bash later this month. CougTube reporter AJ Swartwood caught up with the nationally recognized analyst Ken P Pomeroy to get the scoop on the Cougars postseason prospects. Ken Pomeroy is a meteorologist by trade, but most people know him for his ability to predict the storms and sunshine of college basketball. The beginning of March means one thing for college basketball fans, the start of conference tourneys and build up to Selection Sunday. It's all part of an annual sports rite, but for Salt Lake's Ken Pomeroy, college basketball is a way of life. I create uh, power ratings for college basketball, so these are objective ratings that rate every Division I college team from number one to number 345. His rating system is the brainchild of a scientist's mind and a passion for the hardwood. The Ken Pomeroy ratings debut 10 years ago and have since risen to national prominence and now influence the actual season rankings. So while the Cougars' performance at home is essential to their postseason plans, the work done in Ken Pomeroy's home might be just as important. The problem for BYU is that they're in this gray area. I mean, it looks like they've done enough to get in, but we're kind of trying to guess what the 10 people on the selection committee are going to do. BYU basketball currently sits 37th in the Ken Palm ratings, but the Hoops Guru believes the Cougars still have work to do. So I really think they're going to need to get uh, a couple of wins in the West Coast Conference Tournament. Uh, that will really bolster their resume. If they can do that, then I think they, they're going to feel pretty safe on Selection Sunday. In the meantime, Cougar Nation hopes the master of the madness is right. Pomeroy says that the Cougars' strength this season is actually on the defensive end, but adds that the return of all WCC forward Noah Hartsock is crucial for BYU's plans for March. Brianna? Thanks, AJ. The West Coast Conference Awards are out, and senior forward Kristen Riley earned the top honor on the women's side. Riley is the women's player of the year after leading the Cougars in both scoring and rebounding, averaging nearly 12 points and eight boards, and she is also in the conference's top five in six different categories. Riley isn't the only Cougar taking home some hardware. Lexi Eaton is a co-newcomer of the year and on the freshman All-WCC team. Haley Steed joins Riley on the All-Conference team and academic All-WCC honors go to Jennifer Hampson and Kim Parker. On the men's side, Noah Hartsock and Brandon Davies earned All-Conference honors and Matt Carlino is on the freshman All-Conference team. Craig Cusick gets academic All-WCC honors as well. It was senior night on Saturday against Portland and the Cougar faithful celebrated their record-setting careers of forward Noah Hartsock and Charles Abuo. Coug2 reporter Brandon the senior send-off and the overwhelming response to their departure. They give you so much and I just, I'm, I'm proud of them. I'm proud of what they represent. Emotions ran high on senior day as Charles Abuo and Noah Hartsock suited up for their last home game. I was crying. <laughs> I never thought I would, I would cry out. While they came to Provo as unheralded recruits, Noah Hartsock and Charles Abuo will leave BYU as all-time greats. So they've really helped, you know, along with, obviously under the leadership of Dave Rose, elevate this program to another level. His hair is faded, but Hartsock's game has grown every year. The Oklahoma native was the first recruit to commit to BYU under Coach Rose. But senior day was bittersweet for Hartsock, who was unable to play because of a knee injury. His wife, Kendallin, blessed him with some words of wisdom before the game. You know, let him know that it's okay that he wasn't going to play, and we're still celebrating him and everything he's done. The seniors played an important role, guiding the Cougars into a new conference this season. Hartsock climbed to third in career block shots, and Abuo will leave as the school's all-time wins leader. But it's just about time for the seniors to hang them up as their collegiate careers come to a close. From the Marriott Center, Brandon Steele, Coog Tube. Noah's time in the Marriott Center is up, but BYU won't be without a hard sock for long. His brother Jacob announced that he will end for the Cougars in the fall. When Coog Tube returns, revised rule why football players will be trying even harder to keep their helmets on. And what's happening in other Cougar sports this weekend. We'll be right back. A new NCAA football rule is trying to deal with a growing on-field problem. And as Cook Tube reporter Clint Martinson shows us, it's one that could leave Cougar players riding the bench. Starting next season, the helmet pop-off means the player sits out the next play. And when we go to the videotape, it's easy to see that this could affect our Cougars. 
The NCAA added a new rule for the 2012-2013 football season. Last season, players, coaches, trainers, and fans saw entirely too many helmets flying off. The new rule says that if a player loses their helmet, officials will treat it as an injury and they must sit out the next play, unless the opponent removes the helmet. One reason for the problem is because of new designs. You see a lot of helmets that roll on the field. It's, uh, you know, all over the country. You see it in the league. And, uh, and a lot of it's due to the new helmet molds that are more elongated. Helmets today have an inflatable inner padding to help players get a more snug fit. A snapped-on chin strap also helps the helmet stay where it needs to be. Players also have a lot of responsibility to make sure their helmet fits right and is inflated the right amount. But BYU coaches hope this doesn't become a big problem. Make sure I remind them that they have enough you know, air and the chin straps buckled up and all that stuff. Make sure the equipment guys fit them. Papinga says when helmets are fitted correctly, BYU starters stay in the game and the NCAA stays smiling. But hopefully what it will do is decrease the amount of helmets that are coming off in the game. So I think that's what the NCAA is trying to get accomplished. So. The upcoming season should still bring the big hits, but the new rule will help players stay safe while they create those highlight reels. Brianna? Thanks, Clint. Our baseball team doesn't have to worry about helmets colliding, but they did take a hard hit in Arkansas. The Razorbacks finished the two-game series Wednesday with an 8-1 victory over the Cougars. The Arkansas pitchers dominated the game, giving up only one run and five hits. BYU will head south to take on UC Irvine in California next Thursday. It's a busy day for BYU sports with five teams in action. The women's tennis team will get this day started at Rice, trying to snap a four-game skid. And softball faces Cal State Northridge and St. Joseph's in a San Diego Classic doubleheader. Men's tennis looks to add to their four-game win streak against Boise State. And volleyball will look to get back on track after Saturday's loss as they host number 10 Pepperdine in the Smith Fieldhouse. And of course, men's basketball caps off the night in the WCC tourney against San Diego. When Cooktube comes back, see what we'll do to Emmanuel and Rachel's prediction record. And winter has dragged us back into its glacial claws, but the good news is we're looking at a sunny weekend. 11 game time weather when we return. Lydia, the snow is beautiful, but that Vegas sunshine sure looked nice. I know, I want to be there right now. I'd rather be getting a tan than a freeze-over and feeling on my skin. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least I didn't fall down walking to school this morning, so I'm proud of that, really. It doesn't look that bad outside. I mean, it's sunny at least, but it's definitely a lot colder than Vegas. Right now, outside, it is 28 degrees, and it's going to be warming up later on today, but not very warm, although we have some sunshine. Couple scattered clouds still hanging on there, but they're on their way out and probably by later tomorrow, hopefully all the way gone. Um, and then humidity's still a little high. That wind speed's relatively high, helping to clear out those clouds. In, and then I just want to show you what this looks like from outside. So this is this big snowstorm that we had clearing on its way out. And um, then we have this little patch of sunshine over the weekend. So Southern Utah, temperatures right now are not that high, but warming up. And they didn't get the worst of it like we did up here in northern Utah, so not so much snow. Sunny today, tomorrow, through Sunday, climbing up to almost 59 on Monday, and then ever so slightly tapering back off. And then here on the Wasatch Front, um, still a little bit cloudy today, 35 degrees high today, and then up to 41, and then up through the higher 50s throughout the weekend, and sunny on Sunday and Monday. So we can expect some pretty nice weather, at least over the weekend. And then um, 8 p.m. tonight, Las Vegas obviously is still warmer, so Cougars, the BYU men's basketball are playing tonight at 9 p.m. in Las Vegas, and they have 55 degrees, beautiful sunny weathers out there. And then um, at 2 p.m. tomorrow is when the women's basketball is going to be playing, and they'll get 64 degrees, so lucky them. Thanks, Lydia. It's time for us to tell you who's going to win this weekend in Vegas. Two big games are tonight in the Orleans Arena for the Cougars. BYU men take on San Diego at 9 p.m. Mountain Time. San Diego is coming off a huge win over the Pepperdine Waves. Women's game that we're predicting is Pepperdine against St. Mary's. Number four versus number five. Looks like we're all taking St. Mary's except for me. I'm taking on Pepperdine Waves. I'm taking a there chance. You go. 
with the lower seed, number five. I guess it's not that low, but I think BYU's I just got. The majority. <laughs> I, I think that BYU's got San Diego tonight. I feel pretty confident about that. I really do. Yeah, they'll definitely come out and, and take care of business. My biggest worry is that if we beat San Diego tonight, what will the outcome be tomorrow night against Gonzaga? They yeah. they were they had our number last week when we were up in Spokane. I'm not sure we can do it. We're not, we don't do terribly well in tournament play. I think that for the men's and women's teams, both of the big challenges will be Gonzaga. I think the women's will make it far enough, probably the championship game against Gonzaga. They've already beat them 70 to 40 earlier in the season, so I think the women might have a better chance than the men's team this year. Well, here's Sadly, hoping. happily, I fingers, don't know. Fingers crossed, right? I know. Yeah. And I, I hope we get to see a little bit of Noah Hartsock, just in case it might be the Cougars' last I game. I do as well. Well, that's Cook 2 for Friday, March 2nd. If you want another look at the stories we did today or to share with your friends, check out the CookTube section of our website, 11news.byu.edu. Thanks for joining us and have a great afternoon. Go Cougs!